Welcome back to Mysterious Lost. Today we're going to be talking about 10 mysterious cases of missing persons in the wilderness that have puzzled investigators for years. When someone goes missing out in the woods or in a remote area, it can be extremely difficult to find them even with extensive search efforts. The rugged terrain and lack of clues often hamper the investigation. These persons vanished in strange circumstances, while hiking, camping, or traveling through forests, parks, or other isolated places. Some disappeared completely without a trace, while others left behind baffling clues that raised more questions than answers. These unsolved disappearances continue to baffle both families and law enforcement years later. Perhaps together we can shed some new light and make sense of the mystery surrounding these ten missing persons. Let's get started. Jonathan Aujay, 38 years old, Aujay had the day off from work and went for a day hike in the Devil's Punch Bowl area of the Angeles National Forest on June 11, 1998. He never returned. The Devil's Punch Bowl is a remote park on the north slope of the San Gabriel Mountains. Aujay had a reputation as a skilled outdoorsman and an experienced hiker who hiked in the San Gabriel Mountains about once a week. He was also a long-distance runner who ran daily and had completed six 50-mile ultramarathons. A former paratrooper in the U.S. Army's Special Forces Unit, Aujay was a deputy at the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department at the time of his disappearance. He had been employed with the department for 15 years by 1998 and is described as a conscientious employee who worked nights and rarely called in sick or took vacation time. On the day of his disappearance, early into his hike, O.J. encountered a teacher with class of children on a field trip. He stopped to talk to them and said he planned to go to the summit of Mount Baden-Powell, a 9,400-foot-tall mountain 20 miles away, and returned by sunset. Over the next several hours, two witnesses saw a man, fitting his description, jogging towards the mountain. The last sighting of O.J. was at 6 p.m. Someone saw him heading towards the parking lot. Not long afterwards, Area residents heard a single gunshot in the vicinity. Ajay never returned home and has never been heard from again. His wife reported him missing at 11 p.m. and police found his truck in the parking lot and launched a search at 11.30 p.m. An extensive search involving two helicopters, 30 people, and at least two bloodhounds failed to find any trace of him other than some footprints in the snow near Mount Baden-Powell. The search was called off after a week. O.J. left behind his wife of 12 years. They were high school sweethearts and had a five-year-old daughter. According to his wife, a month before his disappearance, O.J. had told her he wanted a divorce. His sister stated he was unhappy living in Los Angeles County and that he wanted to move to the mountains. For unspecified reasons, investigators believe that Operation Silent Thunder, a two-year undercover methamphetamine operation in the Antelope Valley area, might uncover evidence about O.J.'s disappearance. No clues were found, though, and he remains missing. O.J.'s case remains unsolved. Brenda Maria Jackson 32 years old, Jackson was last seen at her home in the 200 block of Arcadia Street in Park Forest, Illinois, at 9 saw p.m. on January 3, 2016. Her father dropped her off at home. Her mother spoke to her on the phone at 10.30 p.m. Jackson said she was home alone at the time. She worked in the cafeteria at Rich South High School in Rickton Park, Illinois, and was supposed to show up for her shift at 5.30 a.m. the next day. She never arrived at work and has never been heard from again. Jackson left behind six children, 
the youngest of whom was only four months old at the time of her disappearance. She also left all her belongings behind, including her purse, coat, gloves, and identification. And there hasn't been any activity on her credit cards or phone since she was last seen. Four of Jackson's six children were in the care of her mother at the time of her disappearance. The youngest, an infant, was in a foster home, and the oldest was in Texas with Jackson's first husband. According to her mother, Jackson lost custody of the children after she refused to press charges against her husband for domestic violence. She did have supervised visitation, and her family doesn't think she would have abandoned it, her children. Jackson's family believes foul play was involved in her case. She is a military veteran who served in Iraq. Her disappearance remains unsolid. Nahid Azarian Nasabi, 29 years old, Nasabi was last in Lake Forest, California on June 19, 1984. She has never been heard from again. The next day, after she didn't show up for her job at a clothing store in the Laguna Hills Mall, a co-worker went to her apartment to check on her. Nasabi's co-worker found her front door unlocked and her home in disarray and contacted the police. Nasabi was separated from her husband at the time of her disappearance and lived with their two children. The day after she vanished, her husband sent the children to Columbia. Little information is available in her case. David Douglas Boone 56 years old, Boone was last seen at approximately 3 QR p.m. on December 5, 2006 at his residence in the vicinity of the 26300 block of Town Center Drive in Lake Forest, California. He has never been heard from again. His teenage son reported him missing early the next morning when he did not come home. Bloodhounds subsequently tracked Boone's scent from his apartment to the Whiting Ranch Wilderness Park nearby. The park is a popular place for hiking and bike riding. Authorities believe Boone went hiking there on the day of his disappearance. An extensive search of the park turned up no sign of him, however. The search was called off after one week. Investigators believe that if Boone did, in fact, get lost or injured while hiking, he could not have survived long in the cold winter weather. Boone did not take his credit cards, identification, money, vehicle, or cellular phone with him when he went missing, and his adult children and his ex-wife stated it was uncharacteristic of him to leave his youngest son home alone for days. He was going through a divorce in December 2006 and may have been stressed because of that. At the time he went missing, Boone was employed as a golf club designer. He has designed clubs for many professional golfers. His case remains unsolved. Robert Junod, 63 years old, Junod was last seen by his father at home in the 16,000 block of Beth Court in Oak Forest, Illinois, at 7.30 p.m. on April 30, 2018. When his father woke up at 9 a.m. the next day, Junod's truck was fong from the driveway, and his father assumed he had gone to work. He never arrived at work that day, however, and has never been heard from again. Junod's vehicle, a purple 1994 Chevrolet S10 pickup truck with the Illinois license plate number 708763S and a black file cabinet in the bed, was later located at the Thornton Quarry in South Holland, Illinois, with the keys inside it. A photo of the truck is posted with this case summary. He left his medicine, both cellular phones, his work truck keys, and a substantial amount of cash behind at home, and there hasn't been any activity on his bank account since his disappearance. His case remains unsolved. Arvin Walter Nelson. 51 years old, Nelson was last seen in the Ventana Wilderness in the Los Padres National Forest in California 
On August 6, 2014, he planned to go for a long hike in the forest and was supposed to return by August 16. A friend dropped him off at China Camp near Tassajara Road, high and deep in the forest. He was possibly en route to Pine Valley, Pine Falls, or the Black Cone Trail. He was supposed to finish his hike at Big Sur Station from Sykes and the Pine Ridge Trail, but he never arrived there and has never been heard from again. Nelson is an experienced hiker and well-known in the area. An extensive search turned up no sign of him. He is presumed to have gotten lost or injured in the wilderness. David Milton Crouch 27 years old, Crouch was last seen in Pinedale, Wyoming on August 31, 1997. That day, he was on a hiking trip with three friends and a guide in the Bridger Teton National Forest. He separated from the group and went on a solo fishing trip at Island Lake at 10,500 elevation. The others began searching for him after he didn't return to the group's base camp at Lost Lake by nightfall, and they reported him missing the next morning. Nighttime temperatures in the Island Lake area were well below freezing, and Crouch didn't have any supplies with him, not even a coat or gloves. Authorities believe it's unlikely he survived even one night exposed to the elements. He lived in Stevensville, Maryland at the time of his disappearance and was an avid bicyclist who owned a bike shop with his wife in Stevensville. Extensive searches turned up no indication of his whereabouts but he is presumed to have gotten lost or injured in the wilderness. Bruce Howard Creeman Six years old, Bruce was last seen near Buckhorn Flat in the Angeles National Forest in California on July 12, 1960. He was camping with a group of approximately 80 children and adults from the Young Men Christians Association, YMCA, in Los Angeles, California at the time. He was playing with two other children about 300 yards from the YMCA campsite when he became separated from them and was never seen again. The group realized Bruce was missing just a few minutes after he disappeared, and they conducted a search of the area, but turned up no signs as to his whereabouts. Authorities initially believed Bruce had become lost or injured in the mountains, and a massive search was conducted in the days following his disappearance. The area where he disappeared is very rugged, with many chasms and cliffs. Bruce is now believed to have disappeared under suspicious circumstances, however. He was born in Brooklyn, New York, and resided in the 11,000 block of Dempsey Avenue in Grenada Hills, California, in 1960. Authorities believe Mac Ray Edwards was responsible for Bruce's disappearance and a string of other children's disappearances and homicides in California. In 1970, Edwards pleaded guilty to killing three California children and sentenced to death at his own request. He confessed to killing Brenda Howell, Donald Baker, and Roger Madison as well, and authorities believe he was also most likely responsible for the disappearance of Thomas Bowman, Ramona Price, and Karen Tompkins. Edwards lead authorities to a site where he said he had buried some of his victims, but no evidence was located. He died by suicide on death row in 1971. A photograph of Edwards is posted with this case summary. His alleged victims ranged in age from 7 to 16 years old. Bruce's case was reopened in 2007 as authorities renewed the search for the bodies of Edwards' victims. He was employed as a heavy equipment operator in the 1950s and 1960s and helped construct many highways across the state of California. Investigators believe he may have buried the children's remains under the highways. Foul play is suspected in Bruce's disappearance due to the circumstances involved. Cameron John Sequeira 
32 years old, Sakara was last seen walking away from his home on Bluebird Circle in Forest Lakes, Arizona, at 8.30 p.m. on June 26, 2010. He left with his dog, a gray and black healer mix, named Zero. Zero returned two days later, alone and missing its collar. But Sequera has never been heard from again. An extensive search turned up no indication of his whereabouts. Sequera had a very low income at the time of his disappearance and lived in a remote part of Coconino County. He left behind a young daughter whom his mother is now caring for. It would be uncharacteristic of him to abandon his child. The circumstances of his disappearance are unclear. John Paul Squires Seventy-one years old, Squires was last seen rafting on American Creek in Katmai National Park in Alaska on June 20, 2018. He and two friends had traveled there from California for their annual fishing trip. Due to recent storms, the river was running unusually high. The men's raft hit a sweeper and flipped, throwing all three men into the water. Squires, who wasn't wearing a flotation device, disappeared in the river and has not been seen since. His two companions were able to make it to shore and walked for hours until they found some campers who were able to assist them. Squires is presumed drowned, but his body has never been found. Those are ten cases of people who went missing in the wilderness. The remote locations and lack of evidence make these disappearances incredibly hard to solve. But hopefully this video can keep the cases in the public eye and potentially lead to new tips or information. The families of the missing still feel the painful absence of their lost loved ones and seek answers. If you have any information that could help provide details on any of these 10 cases, please contact the appropriate authorities to aid the investigations. Even the smallest clue could make a major difference. While we may never know for certain what happened to these individuals who vanished in the woods and remote areas, perhaps one day their fates will come to light. I'm determined to continue shining a light on these mysteries and missing persons cases. Thank you for watching today's video exploring the strange circumstances surrounding 10 missing persons in the wilderness. I'll see you next time.